Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Christine Kim. I am a researcher at Galaxy. And today, we're going to be talking about staked ETH withdrawals, everyone's favorite topic, um, the next upgrade on Ethereum that looks like it's coming up in April. So um, coming up very soon. Um, I'm going to be going over just how staked ETH withdrawals is going to be processed, how it's going to work. A quick disclaimer before I start the presentation, none of what I'm saying is investment advice. It's just for informational purposes. Please do with this information as you will, but um, yes, don't, don't at me. <laughs> this is our agenda for today. We're going to talk about the different types of staked ETH withdrawals. We're going to go over the timing for how long some of these withdrawals will take. Um, we'll also go over a quick little caveat about withdrawal credential changes. And then because this is a kind of a short presentation, like 20 minutes, we'll end off with some resources where you can learn more and like dive into more detail. So let's get started. Um, there are going to be two main types of staked ETH withdrawals that are happening um, at Shanghai. When you activate a validator, you deposit 32 ETH into the beacon chain. And when you make attestations, when you propose blocks, you get issuance from the beacon chain, the consensus layer of Ethereum, um, as a form of rewards. And those rewards that you get from the beacon chain as issuance will become liquid at Shanghai. And so that's what we call partial withdrawals. Partial withdrawals are the rewards that you get from the beacon chain. Um, the second type of withdrawal are full withdrawals. So full withdrawals are when validators want to unstake their entire principal balance of 32 ETH. Not only their rewards, but also their entire balance of 32 ETH. So as an example, um, I took a look at the best performing validator um, on Ethereum up until now, and that's validator 13120. It's earned about 5 ETH um, since staking at genesis of the beacon chain. Um, so a partial withdrawal for this kind of validator would look like that total income becoming liquid and that validator being able to send that ETH to a different address, sell it, restake it, do whatever they want with it. And so that second red box is what we would call a partial withdrawal. If we're talking about a full withdrawal for this validator, you would see like the unstaking of not only the, effect, the total income, but also the effective balance, like both those red boxes. So I hope that's clear. Those are the two different types of withdrawals that we are going to see at Shanghai. Let's talk a little bit about the timing for these different types of withdrawals, because it does differ between a partial and a full. Um, the first thing to note is that both partial and full withdrawals are actually going to be part of the same queue the same withdrawals queue. And there is a limit to how many withdrawals will be processed on the network every 12 seconds, basically every block. Um, you're going to have a maximum of 16 partial or full withdrawals that can be processed. Um, and so if you think about the active validator set, the number of active validators that are live on Ethereum, which is over 500,000, and you're thinking about basically activating withdrawals for every single one of them, um, it's going to take about four to five days to process all of those partial withdrawals for all 500,000 validators because the, there's a limit. There's only 16 that can be processed per block. Um, so if you want to know the math behind how I got the four to five days, you basically take the number of active validators and you divide it by the maximum number of withdrawals per block, 16, and you multiply that number by the block time. Um, so the larger the active validator set becomes, the longer that, that partial withdrawal process will take, um, because it'll just take longer for the network to, to go through the entire set. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the, the queue for full withdrawals. Um, before you enter into the withdrawal queue, if you want to withdraw your entire 32 principal balance of 32 ETH stake, you have to actually enter into an additional queue before you get to the withdrawal queue. You have to, have to enter into the exit queue. And the exit queue um, is dictated by a little bit of a different maximum bound. It's called the churn limit. And the churn limit changes slightly depending on how many active validators there are on the network. So right now, as you can see in this chart, we have about eight, um, the churn limit is about eight active validators per epoch. 
Um, and when I say epoch, I just mean a set of 32 blocks, so about a t time period of 6.4 6 minutes. Um, and so a validator, when they're trying to fully withdraw their ETH, they'll run through the exit queue first. And if there's less than eight validators that are trying to exit at the same time, you won't see any kind of a delay from the exit queue. It's only, say, when multiples of eight validators are trying to exit that you start to have this exit queue forming. Um, so I did a little bit of additional calculations um, to kind of put the churn limit in perspective for everyone. So say at Shanghai, about 1,000 validators are trying to all exit at the same time, like unstake their full 32 ETH balance. That would take about 13.3 hours to run through. And then after all of that is completed, you'd have to then run through the withdrawal queue, which again, is about four to five days based on the number of active validators there are in the network. And so for the churn limit, the math is a little bit different. Um, it looks like basically the number of validators that are trying to exit divided by the churn limit multiplied by the epoch time, which is 6.4 minutes. Um, it's a little bit different from the math that I was talking about for the, the withdrawal queue. But um, so yes. As you can see, it'll take a little bit longer for full withdrawals to be processed. Partial withdrawals, one, one additional note is that for partial withdrawals, everything, every single validator um, will have their withdrawals, their rewards withdrawn automatically. This is not something that validators need to opt into. It's not something they have to initiate. Um, this just is something that the validator does for you. The network does for validators automatically. However, if you want to exit fully, that is something that you do have to initiate. You have to send a signed message to the beacon chain in order to initiate your full withdrawal. Um, so that's another kind of like important difference between entering into the withdrawal queue and entering into the exit queue. The withdrawal queue is something that happens automatically, whereas the, um, the exit queue is something you have to, to opt into. You have to manually initiate that kind of behavior. Um, so that was a lot of information. I just wanted to summarize kind of what the validator lifecycle looks like based on the information of both full and partial withdrawals being enabled. Um, really at Shanghai, we're starting to see the full life cycle of a validator be completed. Um, before Shanghai, you weren't able to go to step five. You could only go to step four, like get into the exit queue, go through the exit queue, but you weren't actually able to receive your full withdrawal of staked ETH. Now you are gonna start to see um, roughly about 1,000 validators that, are, that have already gone through the exit queue be able to fully withdraw their staked ETH at Shanghai. You're also gonna see step three. Um, we've only had priority fees and MEV be liquid um, since the merge. But now you're going to start to see the issuance rewards for validators are also start to become liquid. So um, this is kind of like a really nice close to the merge. Like Ethereum's transition to proof of stake really, um, it's like the final nail on the coffin of like, we are fully proof of stake. Our validators can now enter and exit fully, uh, stake and unstake fully. Um, so it's very exciting, exciting upgrade. Um, one caveat that I want to mention about withdrawal credentials changes. I said that a validator will automatically have their partial withdrawals processed. This is true, but only for validators that have updated their withdrawal credential change. So when the Beacon Chain first launched in December 2020, Ethereum core developers had thought, oh yes, we are going to move to a proof of stake blockchain, like a proof of stake consensus protocol. And so the withdrawal credentials, like where the rewards are going to be deposited to, were we're all, it was all assumed that it would be a beacon chain address. But it was only when the understanding that actually we're going to move to proof of stake by merging the existing Ethereum blockchain with the beacon chain, when that kind of thinking came together, um, the withdrawal credentials for validators to be an Ethereum 1 address um, got created. So in 2021, validators, Ethereum core developers allowed validators to set an Ethereum 1 withdrawal credential address. And now we actually still have, like post-merge, we still have Ethereum, people executing transactions on Ethereum, people executing smart contracts, layer twos are being built on Ethereum. So it's not like the entirety of Ethereum moved to the beacon chain. The beacon chain just kind of swapped out the consensus protocol and most validators, when they have their withdrawals become liquid, will now have to 
specify an Ethereum address to which their re rewards can be deposited to. Um, this wasn't actually the thinking when the Beacon Chain first launched back in 2020. Um, and so you can see the black portion of this chart represent all of the validators that still have a Beacon Chain withdrawal address. Um, that is denoted by a prefix of OXOO. Um, but there were some very, um, very, I would say smart um, validators who are spun up after 2021, after the withdrawal prefix of OX01 was created, um, particularly Lido. Lido has done an extremely great job of spinning up validators that already have the OX01 prefix credential. And so their rewards are gonna be automatically processed at Shanghai. But for the majority of these validators that are in the black, they're gonna have to go through a credential change process. This is a one-time process that most validators will have to go through before they're gonna be able to get any rewards. And this slide kind of talks about how you as a validator node operator might go about doing that. So first, you should check what is my withdrawal credential prefix. You can do that by going to a blockchain explorer, like Beacon Scan or Beacon Chain. I popped in validator 13120 because they were spun up at the Beacon Chain, or like at the genesis of the Beacon Chain, when OX01 prefixes didn't exist, of course they're gonna be one of the ones that have to update. Um, how do you go about updating? It may differ depending on the client, the consensus client that you're using. Um, that basically you're sending a signed message to the Beacon Chain saying that I wanna change my withdrawal credential. Um, prefix and it's really important that validator node operators don't do that right now because the network is not able to understand those signed messages at present. Um, you can prepare to send the credential change message on test nets um, and there are tools like ETHDO that help you construct that signed message correctly. Um, and I just really want to stress that this is a one-time change. So you want to be careful about what address you send it to, what address you set. Because once you set it, you can't change it again. Um, unless you exit fully and then restake back onto the network. Um, so this is kind of like a big change um, that validator node operators will have to do um, and start practicing for now if um, you as an independent validator node operator haven't been doing so already. Um, so finally, I want to go through some tools and resources that will hopefully help, um, especially validator node operators, get ready for the change, get ready for Shanghai. Um, generally speaking, the staked ETH withdrawals process that I went over about the two types of withdrawals, the queues, um, which queue you go through first, all of that information is in a Galaxy report um, that I wrote a couple months back. But there's also a great FAQ by the Ethereum Foundation um, called ETH Withdrawal FAQ. And in this presentation, I didn't really go into cell pressure. I didn't go into projections of how much ETH would become unlocked. Um, but we do have those numbers and those kinds of analysis if you're interested um, in another Galaxy report titled How Could Shanghai Unlocks Affect the Price of ETH? And also, Data Always, who um, actually helped with this chart, um, has a great, um, great blog post about the impact of partial withdrawals on on the, the effect of partial withdrawals after the Shanghai fork. Um, and finally, I had mentioned um, ETHDO as like a really great tool for helping validator node operators construct their signed messages correctly for updating withdra their withdrawal credentials. Um, and so they've got a really great kind of step-by-step -step guide um, called Changing Withdrawal Credentials Available for Anyone. And then we've got all the public test nets. So Ethereum developers announced yesterday, actually, that the Gorley test net would be live March 14th. But if you're interested in trying things out already, there's the Zhejiang test net. Um, the Sepolia test net is a permission validator set. But if you're interested, I'm sure there's ways to also get onto that test net. To try, to, as a validator node operator, just get ready for the upgrade. Make sure that your software is like all upgraded and up and running, and you guys are ready for unlocks. Um, and then finally, last but not least, uh, the community calls. So Ethereum core developers do this for almost every single upgrade, especially ones that are going to have a pretty big impact on the Ethereum community. So there were like five or six, I think, community calls before the merge. 
And now there's going to be another community call happening for Shanghai. The first one was back in January. There's still a live recording of that. Um, but it's a really great way for members of the community to ask questions directly to Ethereum core developers if you have um, any concerns about Shanghai coming up. So that's kind of another great resource that I'd highlight um, for anyone who's trying to prepare for the Shanghai upgrade. Um, so yes, that is my entire presentation. Um, I ran through some of that information pretty quickly. Um, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter um, if you have additional questions. But because we also have maybe two minutes left for the presentation, one minute, um, can I take one question? OK. Um, maybe I'll take one question from the audience about this process, and then we can wrap up. Yes. So a, a slash validator um, is basically a validator that has broken the rules of the network and is forcefully ex and is forced to exit the network. It's not something that they initiate by going through the but basically entering the exit queue. There is another delayed period for a slashing event because the network has to understand how many other slashing events have occurred at the same time that that single validator was slashed. Um, so it does extend your withdrawal process. Um, I don't have the exact numbers of how many days, but um, the process does look a little different. On top of the exit queue and on top of the withdrawal queue, you have an additional period of delay for slash validators. Um, really great question. And one other thing that I want, to mention, I want to mention before we end off the presentation. There's going to be a panel on staked ETH withdrawals happening later this afternoon at 2.50. And there's going to be um, an Ethereum core developer, um, a representative of Rocket Pool, um, and a couple other people from the, from the Ethereum community. So highly encourage um, you guys to, if you're interested, to come out to that panel. It'll be on the main stage later today. So yeah, thank you guys. <laughs>